Hello, and welcome to The Tasting. I'm Warren Robertson, and this week, as with every week, we're going to get a celebrity to taste three wines and put them in order of expense. This week, I'm joined by a comedian, a chef, I suppose, in a way, and, uh, and general all-round celebrity, Chris Forrest. It's good to be here. Are you doing the same thing with your celebrities, starting with the most expensive and then working your way down? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk more about specifically about the wines that you actually like yourself. Yeah, I do enjoy, depending on the weather, the time of year, etc., what I'm eating. I, I like a nice Shannon uh, from time to time, a good Sauvignon Blanc. Um, as far as the reds go, I'm, I'm quite easy. I, I, I do enjoy a good Cab Sav. Did you see what I did there? I called it Cab Sav. I abbreviated it because I'm that cool. Do you have any particular favourites? Um, not necessarily, it, it all depends. Niederberg came out with their Wine Masters range a few okay. years ago. Uh, the Motorcycle Marvel is the one that, that I enjoy the most. Right, okay, I actually I don't think I've ever had that before. Well, obviously, because they don't sell it in spa. Right, let's see if he's as smart when we taste the wines. Ken Forrester Pernitage. It's a truly authentic South African grape. A little bit of a fun fact first before we start. Pernitage is only available in South Africa and it is a blend between Pinot Noir and Sunsa. Back to the wine, uh, what to expect. So it's this particular wine from Ken Forrester is quite a cheerful, quite an easy drinking wine, one that you would have with pizza for instance. You're going to get those sort of classic notes of, of mulberries, a little bit of spice, some plum pudding um, and cherries on the wine. This one's not quite as in your face. A little bit more subtle. One of my absolute favorite wines of all time and more wineries, should I say, Rustenburg. So the one we're looking at today is the Rustenburg Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, the farm has got a long heritage. It was established in 1682, if I'm not mistaken, in Stellenbosch. Um, and Cabernet Sauvignon is very well known uh, to grow exceptionally well in the Stellenbosch region. Uh, what we're going to find on this wine is Typical Cabernet Sauvignon flavours um, of dark berries, um, a little bit of plums and tobacco. This seems like it's been quite well aged. Next one up is Bayescliff Pinotage, which is South Africa's most popular Pinotage at this point in time, and it has been for many, many years. Um, it's yet again quite an easy drinking wine. Um, it's been developed to be able to be drank by itself, but also with food. Um, so the primary fruit that you're going to pick up are plums, black cherries, um, velvety tannins, um, but it's soft and elegant with medium body on that wine. Fairly worthwhile, but I'm going to rank them in that order, depending on what they are. Yes, I'm going to keep with that. So let's do the reveal. Right, let's start with uh, the one that you put down there as the cheapest. It is in fact, Chris, the most expensive one. Ah, it is a Rustin bag. Yes. Now, when it comes to the other two, congratulations, you, uh, you got them in the reverse order. <laughs> completely wrong again. But, well, the, uh, the Bayerskloof uh, Pinotage is exactly right in terms of the price, mm -hmm. with that one being the first and this one being the second. You know the Bayerskloof Pinotage, it's a solid wine, it's a great wine, mm -hmm. you've, you've made an accurate choice. And again, Chris, you're picking a great drinking wine as your number one, so uh, that seems to be your thing. The cheaper the wine, the more you like it. There we go. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a lucky thing to have, to be honest. <laughs> so is a hangover. 